to discuss these developments. We can talk now to Chow Win. He is the founder and the executive director of the Burma Human Rights Network. He joins us now from London. Um, welcome to the program, sir. Thanks for joining us. Um, first of all, I just want to um, quote to you a little of what the uh, UK Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab has said today on Twitter. He said that uh, Britain condemns the bullying action by the Myanmar regime. So it does sound for the moment um, that Britain is supporting the ousted ambassador. Do you think what Britain has had to say so far has gone far enough? Uh, th there are a few things I would like to share here. For, first of all, thank you for having me today. Uh, what I suggest, what we want to see, what we are seeing here is uh, there are a couple of uh, different angles. Uh, the first of all, this ambassador who has been denying to join the CDM movement when people's, hundreds of people has been shot dead and killed in Burma, and he didn't join that movement. So suddenly what's happening now is very questionable now in our views. And and this, another thing is, you see, um, he has been supported by those who supported Rohingya genocide and who stand up with the that time against the Rohingya community are now supporting him. That's really questionable now. And that raised me a very doubtful situation that uh, how come the ambassador is all, all the time in the wrong side and and also he has been he has been claiming that he reached out to crph and what we realized that we learned from some of from some of our contact that he didn't he just you know tick the box that's what he do and and uh, but however what's happening in in on the on the, on our soil is unacceptable you know this is not only bullying this is just slapping on our face on our democracy you know, you, you, you say that you are a little distrustful of what the ambassador has been doing, but why would the military junta have ousted him if they don't believe that he was supporting the protesters in the streets? You see, first of all, he didn't declare himself what which side he is from, right? what he's doing. And all he's doing is he's just trying to play in diplomacy, diplomacy with both sides. That's, that's he, this is what... Uh, very questionable from our side because he he has a very you see the example is you know the UN in in uh, uh, Burma rap in UN the way he stand up and he stand out very clearly and against the regime against the you know the fascist military regime and he didn't do the same way he has been very questionable uh, doubtful uh, you know reaction and at the beginning and now uh, what we also learning that there are some information. Uh, coming uh, coming to us, and we still verifying that how credible that information is, because there are some questionable behavior inside the embassy. We coming we're receiving now, so we need to see that the, how the ambassador is credible. What do you think Britain should do now? You know, I mentioned that Dominic Raab, the foreign secretary, is apparently supporting the um, the ousted ambassador for the moment. Is that? the right approach, in your view? Um, should Britain be doing more to support uh, the protesters in the streets? I mean, UK now, uh, there are a couple of things UK should do. Uh, the first of all, there are diplomatic protocols and what we you can, you, UK is supposed to do. And, and also, whether the ambassador is, uh, you know, credible or not, we cannot allow the kind of bullying and the you know slapping on off on a democracy that kind of uh, behavior and lawlessness is not acceptable in on on uk soil this is the clear message not just by tweeting not just by poor state the uh, issuing statement we need to do some we need some action we need to do some action that will tell that will message send the message to the military especially military that their murderers and and you know lawlessness behavior it's not welcome in UK. Well, you know, the United Kingdom, the EU, the United States, all these uh, countries and entities have already imposed sanctions on various officials within the uh, military junta in Myanmar. Is that not far enough in your view? No, it, it is not enough because you see the military is still killing the people and we can't just do something, uh, you know, with, we have been asking, actually, we have been asking to target the military junta's economic interest since 2017 after the Rohingya genocide. And nobody is that time will take any serious action about that because the genocide is not taken seriously in, in our world. That's very sad. And then and then now, uh, 
when the, the military overthrown a democratically elected government, now those countries are, well, we welcome that, that, that step. We really welcome. Uh, but we have to do more because you see that every day they are using fighter jet to bombard the ethnic minorities. And there are 20,000 refugees are already in, in Thai Bama border. And there are several has been killed by the bombing. So we have we are asking international community for to impose arms embargo and, and also to impose no fly zone on the ethnic control region. Do you think if this arms embargo that you mentioned is not imposed, that uh, the United Nations is correct that Myanmar could be looking at a civil war? It is on the way right now because Burma is at the brink of full blown civil civil war because you see. Um, Burma is surrounded by the ethnic arms group, right? In, and surrounded means the all sides, you know, all the borders have ethnic arms struggles. And Burma has already, you know, killing hundreds of people every 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 town and city. And people are frustrated and they they try to impose fear, but this become fury now. So the people are now at the stage that let's do or die. You know, people people are you know. Fed up with the with the with the with the iron iron fist uh, ruling system and uh, uh, you know the autocratic system and the military dictatorship. So people has understand what is the consequence if this military remain in the power. So we are not going to allow this. So people are you know very determined. But the point here is the important point is the Western countries like UK, US, EU, uh, Canada, Australia, all these countries have they have their soft power in Burma. This soft power has been attacked. They are under the attack. And the military is determined to eliminate all this, like civil societies, like the organizations, like the activities, like those activists. You know, everything that is promoting democracy and human rights will be eliminated. So this is our turn. What are we going to do? We just sit back and watch and claiming that, you know, Burma is saying sorry. I think this is not the right time to do this. We have time. This is the time now to come up with some action. All right, Chao Win, I want to thank you very much for talking to us on France 24 today.